there was this one morning where um, I walked into the bathroom and I was standing in my underwear, brushing my teeth in front of the mirror. And I looked up at the mirror and my first thought was, ugh. I noticed that my jowls were starting to look like saddlebags on a pack horse at the Grand Canyon. <laughs> and uh, I had like these crazy lines by my eyes and my neck was really like kind of saggy and one boob was hanging lower than the other and my gray hair was coming in and I and as soon as I started kind of critiquing my thoughts or my my looks and appearance then my mind rich started going fuck I didn't get that email back to that person and I got that presentation I need to do and my god did that speech just cancel again what the fuck am I gonna do and I look down and the dog needs to be walked and then I think I, I got a zoom call in nine minutes like I gotta get my shit again. and before I knew it my whole mood was low. I felt overwhelmed. I had taken myself down mentally. I just wanted somebody to walk in and be like, Mel, you got, it's going to be okay. Like you got this girl. Like mm -hmm. it's lift your head up. You can handle this. I don't know what came over me, Rich. This is pathetic. But standing there in my underwear in front of my bathroom sink, I raised my hand and high five my reflection. And I cracked a smile because it's so fucking corny. I even thought of that guy, Stuart Smiley from the SNL skits. Mm -hmm. so remember that I'm nice, I'm kind, yeah. people like me. Went on with my day. That was it. Snapped a photo though. No, not that one. Oh, not that one. Mm -mm. Not the first time. And then I kept doing it. I did it probably for a week or two. And here's the weird thing about it. I started when I woke up after doing this high five your own reflection in the mirror thing, I actually started to feel like I was looking forward to it. And here's why. You know, I've spent a lifetime just like you standing in front of the mirror. And what I realize now is that when I'm standing in front of a mirror, I'm either critiquing mm -hmm. or picking myself apart or I'm ignoring myself. And when you start to high five your own reflection, it starts to build a partnership within you with yourself. When you walk into the bathroom and you see your reflection and you've been greeting it, it's like seeing another person. It's the strangest thing. You start to realize how often you fucking ignore or destroy yourself when you see yourself or beat yourself up. And here's what's also crazy. You have a lifetime positive association with high-fiving other people. Mm -hmm. Sure. As a runner, as a racer, you have gotten so many high fives, Rich. What does a high five say to you when somebody gives you one? You feel seen, you feel appreciated, you feel energized by it. And it's, a, it's an exchange of energy. It's not the same, and you talk about this in the book, it's not the same as like self-talk because there's a participation involved in it. There's like a communion yes. aspect to it. Yeah. And you know, if you think about it, you're so good at celebrating, seeing, and cheering for other people in your life. You plan birthday parties, you reach out to people when you're worried about them, you help out colleagues, you cheer for your favorite sports teams, you high five people like Rich as they're running races past you, you buy people's merchandise, you do all kinds of stuff for other people, but nobody's taught you how to do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. In fact, the reason why it feels fucking weird to high five your own reflection is because you've been taught to do the opposite. Why is the default to just beat ourselves down like that? I mean, it is crazy. We would never treat anyone else in our lives, especially the people we care about, the way that we treat ourselves in terms of the self-talk or the narrative or the critique or the, you know, the, the, the kind of harshness with which we, you know, judge our appearances, our behavior the way we you know, think back on things that we said the other day and just are horrified by our own selves. And it's, I don't know if it's everybody, but everybody. it's most people. Except for Buddhists. I mean, I yeah. think that they're like, like if you're a big practicing Buddhist, that's a monk. Right. That's like just Why kind can't of the default be the good things though? Well, you I- know, Why you, is it wired that You know that why? Way? There's, a, there's cognitive bias. There's a, there's a bias towards mm -hmm. negativity. Uh, and it's a protection mechanism that's a default from evolution, that if you remember the bad sh you're more likely to spot it when it happens in right. the future. So you can avoid it. And here's where I think it begins. 
I believe my theory is that it begins two places. Either you, or that could be both actually, you either learned the pattern of beating yourself up because you had parents or caregivers that were hard on themselves or hard on you. And so as a child, you absorb that pattern and you now repeat it and you don't even realize it. So those moments you're like, oh my God, I sound just like my dad or my mom. That is an example of a pattern that you've absorbed. Mm -hmm. So particularly for women, we've watched our mothers be critical about their appearance. We've watched our mothers ignore and criticize themselves in the mirror. And so we learn that from our caregivers. So that's one place. The second place that we learn it is when the drive in your life becomes fitting in. Fitting into groups in elementary, middle, high school, college, your neighborhood, that feels safe when you fit in. When you feel like you don't belong, you immediately go into a protection mechanism. And I believe a lot of the negative self-talk is a sorting hat type of mentality yeah. that we do to ourselves going, I can't be with those people. I can't be with those people. It's safe to be with those people. And you start to see yourself and the world around you as places where you belong and places where you don't. And part of the criticism, as fucked up as it sounds, that we engage in all the time is don't be too big. Don't be too loud. Don't show yourself too much. Don't have blue hair. Don't do this. Other people won't like you. It starts as a way to protect yourself from mm -hmm. being rejected. But the truth is you develop a habit of rejecting yourself. Right. Meanwhile, you're further divorcing yourself from who you truly are because you're not Correct. giving yourself permission to be yourself. That gets sublimated in favor of fitting in and, you know, accommodating other people and acclimating your behavior around what will be approved of. Yes. So for me, um, I, you know, I have clearly a lifetime of beating myself up and tearing myself down and regretting decisions that I made and in the middle of stumbling through life instead of being like, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay, being like, you're really fucked up now, Mel. How does that help? Right. How does criticizing and, and being hard on yourself help? 